Hello friends, welcome to your favorite show Science for Juniors with me SRK and my lab assistant Binny. Hello! That's a beautiful bunch of flowers. So what's the special occasion? No occasion, Professor. You know, today in our handicraft class, in school, our teacher taught us to make artificial flowers. So I just bought them to show you. Mmm, they look quite real, as if from a real plant. Really? Oh, thank you, Professor. That means my artificial flowers can be put as a substitute in real plants. Not exactly, Binny. Why? It can make a plant without flowers look beautiful. Yeah, but your artificial flowers cannot help in reproduction unlike the ordinary flowers. Flowers help in reproduction in plants? Oh, how? I want to know about it. Well, Binny, our today's episode, based on seed formation and dispersal, has answer to your curious question. So, let's zoom into the virtual world and help your curiosity. A little girl here is helping her mother in taking out the peas from pea pods. Each pea pod has many peas inside them. The little girl wonders why some fruits like a mango has just one seed unlike a pea pod or an apple where there are multiple seeds. Let's find an answer to a question and much more as we learn about Sexual reproduction in plants Pollination and fertilization and seed dispersal. The little girl must first know how seeds are formed. The ability to survive and ensuring that a species carries on its genre is the essence of life. Reproduction is the process where a living organism produces another organism of its own kind. Reproduction in plants can be sexual and asexual. Sexual reproduction in plants is a mechanism where male and female reproductive cells fuse. The plants that sexually reproduce have the reproductive structures called the flowers, which yield to fruits and seeds subsequently. A typical flower has four main parts, sepals, petals, stamens and pistil. A stamen, which is male reproductive part of the flower, has two parts, the anther and the filament. A pistil, which is female reproductive part, has three parts, the stigma, the style and the ovary. <gasps> Flowers are also male and female? This is surprising. I never knew this. Well, Binny, there are many mysteries in the world of science that you need to uncover. Ha <laughs> ha! Professor, I'm wondering if female flowers are like female humans? As in, do they like shopping? Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, Binny, can you think beyond shopping? Um, I was just wondering about the flower. Hmm. And what else were you wondering about apart from the shopping part? We saw that there are male and female flowers. But how do they actually help in reproduction? Well, let's learn about that in the virtual world. Flowers develop into fruits as a result of two very important processes. That is, pollination followed by fertilization in plants. Pollination is the process of transfer of pollen from the anthers to the stigma of a flower. When the pollen falls on the stigma in the same flower, it is called self-pollination. When it falls on the stigma of another flower of the same plant or of another plant, it is called cross-pollination. Now, the little girl is curious to know how can pollen go from one flower to another on its own? Does somebody carry it? What happens when the insects, butterflies and bees fly from flower to flower? These insects act as carriers of the pollen. The pollen gets carried on the wings and legs of the insects 
butterflies and bees. Wind is another medium which helps in pollination. After pollination, the pollen travels down the style towards the ovary. Inside the ovary lies the structure, one or multiple ovules. Each ovule contains the female reproductive cell, that is, the egg. The pollen reaches the location of the ovule so as to fuse with the egg. This process is called fertilization. The ovary ripens to form a fruit and the ovules develop into seeds. Now the little girl understands why some fruits have only one seed and others so many. It depends on the number of ovules. That's right, says mother. Oh, that was interesting. Thanks, Binny. Well, I forgot to tell you, I have passes for a science seminar tomorrow. And this time, you surely have to come. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, God. How boring these seminars are. They are almost like a punishment. Well, I could clearly hear that. Oh, oops. Hmm. Never mind. You are always like that. Now it's time to get back to the virtual world and learn more about seed formation and dispersal. Why many seeds should even be needed? Plants have to make sure that their seeds are released from their fruit and find suitable places in which to grow. When a fruit falls, its seeds come out and new plants can grow. It sounds like a simple enough process, right? But in reality, seeds die even after they have sprouted. So, not too many actually become a new plant. They need help to get to a safe place, somewhat away from the parent tree, so that they don't have to compete for light, water and food. This help they get from agents such as wind, water, birds, animals and also human beings. Now plants that depend on the wind to disperse their seeds need to produce many, many seeds because most get lost when they are carried away. Only very few actually reach the ground and sprout. Those that depend on animals and humans for dispersal need fewer seeds because the chances of survival of the seeds are higher. Wow! We have learned quite a lot today. Thanks, Professor. Welcome, Binny. Now she's going to try some tricks to get rid of her so-called punishment. Um, Professor, I just remembered that maybe we will have an extra class tomorrow uh, after the school. So in that case, I may not be able to accompany you for the seminar. Oh, no, no, Binny. No tricks. You have to go. Oh, okay. No tricks work on him. Yes, Binny. None of your tricks will work on me. Haha. <laughs> By the way, you know there are some plants who are quite a trickster. What? Plants use tricks? Yes. Let's find out more on this in our Do You Know section. Do you know that orchids are the biggest tricksters among plants? But how? Well, they use the most innovative methods to make sure insects who visit them get enough pollen to carry. So do they trap the insects? Sometimes they do. They have a trap dough, but it is concealed behind the pollen sacs. But many times, they just clap their stamens over the visiting bee and when it struggles to escape, it gets nicely coated with the pollen that has been released. Wow! So is Orchid the only trickster? Oh no! There are others. The trefoils, for instance. They have a landing pad for insects which pops up stamens and releases pollen when the insects land. I need to learn some tricks from the plants. So friends, 
time for us to go down the memory lane and revise what all we have learned today. Pay proper attention. So let's recap what we learned today. Sexual reproduction in plants is a mechanism where male and female reproductive cells fuse. Pollination occurs when pollen comes into contact with the stigma. Wind and insects are the chief pollinators. The ovary ripens to form a fruit and the ovules develop into seeds. Wind, water, birds and animals are the agents of seed dispersal. Ah, now time for us to go! No, Binny. It's time for us to say bye-bye to our friends. But remember to come for the seminar tomorrow at 4 p.m. And friends, time for us to say bye. But you keep exploring the world of science. We will see you soon.